should I say? Well, you're not usually stuck for words. I am this time. Why, you've made speeches before, loads of them. I remember wiping the tomatoes off. It was egg. Oh, yes, so it was. Still, that's one good thing about your becoming an MP. We'll never go hungry. <laughs> Why do you think that is, Jean? What? That every time you get to your feet to say a few words, people feel compelled to throw their grub at you. Perhaps they've heard about your cooking and think I look as though I need a good meal. <laughs> Well, most nights after you've made a speech, you look as though you need a car wash token. It's a marginal constituency. You're bound to get people disagreeing with you. It's the way the inarticulate express themselves. It's like kids. They don't like what you're doing, so they chuck their dinners at you. But I have to say what I think, not just what people want to hear. So say what you think. But this is different. This is my maiden speech to the House of Commons. In a way, it's my first speech to the nation. Oh, oh yes, all right. <laughs> I mean, it's not the same as a soapbox at Hyde Park Corner. What should I say for a maiden speech? How about goodbye? A bit help you are. Well, I've got my own job to do. I've got to finish the washing, put the plates in the spin dryer. You see what men are reduced to these days? <laughs> what? Women's work. Well, if it's any consolation, Jeff, it's far worse to see what women are reduced to these days. Well, what's that? Politics. realize you were the kamikaze wing of the Labour Party. I should have known you were the unacceptable face of Motor. Your turn for the company car, is it? Neil not using it today. <laughs> oh, look, we've gone green. I'll see you at the house. I'll leave the door open for you. you'll let me know in plenty of time, it'll be all right. Fine. Oh, Jean Price. Yes, mister. Oh, Mr. Whip. Oh, for God's sake, I'm not an ogre, you know. Do call me Norman. This is the Labour Party. We're all comrades here. Yes, yes, Norman. Well, now, uh, word to the wise. Yes. A clue to the clever. Maiden speeches. Yes. I assume you'll be making one. Yes. Yes, they all do. Well, you know the procedure, do you? Uh, not really. Well, when you're ready with your speech, you uh, slip me the word and I'll give the speaker the nudge that you're looking to catch his eye. Yes. Then when you go into the chamber, tip him the wing, give him the nod you're ready to stand. Yes. And there won't be any need to say anything. Right. <laughs> not quite clear, is it? Oh, limpid. Oh, you'll soon get used to it. It's the way we do things here. Right. I'd better brush up on my semaphore then. <laughs> By the way, Jean, uh, you need anybody to show you the ropes, any help with your speech or information whatsoever. Oh, yes, but don't bother me when I'm busy. Any other time, you'll be more than welcome. Right. Well, when aren't you busy? Good oh, God, woman, you think I sit on my backside all day? Hey, just a minute. I want a word with you. <laughs> oh, oh. Are you all right, Jean? Yes, thank you. Ah. Hello. Well, for a start, you only got to do ten minutes. Who says? Custom and precedent. And you'll enjoy the rare luxury of no interruptions. You mean they won't heckle me? No, not the first time. After that, they'll be bringing in dead cats to pelt you with. <laughs> and your maiden, you get a clear run. They're just uh, weighing you up, really. <sighs> but like a confederation of butchers sizing up a chicken while they decide which knife to use. <laughs> what will they expect when I stand up? Uh, do you play a musical instrument? Oh, come on. Now, for a start, you'll have to praise the last incumbent of your seat, his uh, sterling qualities and all that. 
He didn't have any. It was being a slob that killed him. <laughs> well, that doesn't matter. <laughs> Every man's a good man when he's dead. Then a few words about your constituency. Something about your own interests. Uh, which particular cudgels you'll be taking up? Oh, I'll mention women's issues then. Oh, that'll be good. Oh, yes, that will be good. Oh, that'll interest them? No, it'll put them straight to sleep. <laughs> In fact, the duller you can make it, the better. Once you hear those snores rumbling round the chamber, you'll know you've really arrived. In fact, I warn you right now, if you go in there and demonstrate so much as a spark of original thought, you are paving the road to trouble. Why? Because nobody likes a smart ass, especially a female one. The art of good parliamentary speaking is to be as boring as the last man. It's not considered sporting to excel. Oh, well, it's nothing like aiming high. Tea? Uh, tie. Oh, tie. <laughs> One last thing, Jean. When you've finished talking... Yes? Somebody from the government backbenches will stand up to reply. They'll welcome you to the Commons and uh, compliment you on the fluency, wit and eloquence of your speech. Oh, will they really? Yeah. But don't believe a word of it. They say that to everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. I've got so much confidence now, I think I'll give half of it to someone who's insecure. See you later, Jean. <laughs> Committee calls. Bye. Godfrey. What are we privatising today, then? Uh, certainly not Scotland. Mm -hmm. Lang me your lumbreek. <laughs> Scotch knit. You busy, Jean? Yes, I'm working on my maiden speech. Oh, well, I caught you at the right moment, then. Let me give you my card. Godfrey, I am paired off with you, not to say on occasion cheesed off with you. I already have a pack of your cards with all your various addresses. In fact, I probably know all there is to know about you, apart from your inside leg measurement. I could get my secretary to send you the details. That won't be necessary, thank you. Oh, well, this is my card with me wearing my other hat, my finger in my other pie. Egan Public Relations. I know you, don't I? I'm in the Tory party. <laughs> well, be careful, then. Godfrey, what is this? I'm busy. Well, supplementary to my parliamentary activities, I run a little public relations outfit, and uh, we supply really reputable speech-writing service for MPs and so on. You what? Well, I've got a list here, actually. Yes, we offer a very full range. Now, here's the Peace and Freedom speech, 150. 100? Let me see that. <laughs> Today's government, where it's gone wrong. Oh, yes. And now, uh, that's on a cheap sale. You can have that for 65 quid. Look, I know where this government's gone wrong without paying 65 pounds for it. But what are you doing selling speeches on where the government's gone wrong? You're in the government, aren't you? Well, yes. So I'm in a good position to know. <laughs> Socialism, the way forward. Ah, yes. Now, that comes a bit more expensive. As you can imagine, that was quite difficult to put together. <laughs> What you know about socialism, Godfrey, could be writ large with a thick pencil on a gnat's bum. Oh, you surely don't imagine that I wrote it myself. <laughs> no, I got one of your lot to write it for me. Who? Ken Miller. Ken? Yes, the Scotch knit. Didn't do a bad job, actually. Nearly won me over myself. Luckily, I came to my senses. Oh, it was well worth the 80 quid. But it says here, 140. Well, you don't begrudge me a little something for myself, a little bit for my trouble. I don't believe it. I mean, I am absolutely speechless. Well, it's a good thing I sat down, then. <laughs> With indignation. Oh, well, here you are. Indignant speech. There we are. 45, 90 Look, plus that. It might have slipped your notice, but we are on different sides of the political fence. So? What's wrong with a little private enterprise? Oh, go and table an amendment somewhere, Goffrey. I'm uh, busy. Now, just a second, Jean. Wait a minute. Now, now here we are. Yeah. Basic maiden's speech. Yeah. Runs ten minutes at normal talking speed. Always goes down well. They've heard it before, but they love to hear it again. <laughs> you just insert the name of your constituency in the blanks there. You know, far from seeming like an MP, you remind me very much on occasion of an over-persistent second-hand car salesman. Oh, are you looking for a car then? <laughs> I am surprised at you. Mm. God preserve us all from being predictable. What have I done? Socialism, the way forward. Mm, sounds familiar. Or am I thinking of capitalism, the way backwards? <laughs> sounds familiar. You wrote it. Really, Ken. Providing speeches for Godfrey Egan's rent-a-gob catalogue. I didn't provide them for nothing. I got paid. Yes. Well, 
Judas got 30 pieces of silver. Well, I got more than that. 80 quid he gave me, plus two pounds royalties on each copy sold, and it all went straight into local party funds. If he's going to subsidise my politics, I'm not going to stop him. I'm not exactly leading the high life down here, am I? You've got an electric toothbrush? <laughs> Debauchery isn't what it used to be. Anyway, why shouldn't I have additional sources of income? Hattersley's got a newspaper column, Tebbit's got a TV programme. Old MacDonald's got a farm. <laughs> How are the carefully chosen words coming along? All carefully chosen. How do I look? Lovely, like a vestal virgin to the sacrifice. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. You look lovely too. Yes, but I'm only lovely on the inside. Aren't you coming over to hear me? Mm-hmm. I'll be there. Any last tips? Keep it short, keep it snappy, have a fast car waiting. <laughs> I feel rather nervous. Uh, well, don't go to the toilet. A full bladder will give your speech that extra touch of urgency. <laughs> right. I'll have a cup of tea first. Oh, and Jean, take no prisoners. Right. <laughs> hello. Miss Price. Mm. Oh, hello, Harry. Lovely day. Yes, I'm giving my maiden speech today. Oh, well, I'll listen out for that then. Oh, hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Uh, hello, hello, hello. I'm bound to ask a question today, you know. Are you really, sir? Hmm. Oh, well, I'll listen out for that then. Jolly good. Jean? Jean? What is it, Tim? I'm just going to make my speech. I've been looking for you everywhere. You know you wanted me to keep you involved in any uh, women's issues that might crop up. Yes, but not now. It just came up on the agency report. Oh, this is appalling. Yes, it should make the front pages. I don't believe it. He let him off. Probation. The man almost killed that woman and the judge gives him probation. I mean, hanging's too good for people like that. Uh, well, yes, I think, actually, strictly speaking, Jean, we in the Labour Party are sort of... Well, against hanging, really. I am against it. I said it was too good for him, didn't I? Yes, yes, of course. Well, there'll be a hell of a row about this, I think, don't you? Well, there will be if I've got anything to do with it. I mean, this is tantamount to a licence to assault women. You get stiffer sentences for motoring offences. Yes. It's not very good, is it? Not very good? Yes. Well, what do you want to do about it? I'd recommend pretty tough action on this one. Yes. What about a letter to The Guardian? I was trying to think of something a little more immediate than that. Uh, take that back to my office. What is it? It's my speech notes. Aren't you going to make it? Oh, yes. Well, you'll be needing them, won't you? I mean, I've got plenty to go on here. But, Jean, on a maiden speech, you're not supposed to be controversial. Oh, dear. I'll leave what. Do we have that every day of week? <laughs> Now, Jean. Jean Price, a moment of your time, if you don't mind. Yes, Norman. What exactly was the meaning of that? What? In there, that farrago. Oh, that was my maiden speech. That was not a maiden speech. It was common assault of the eardrums. That speech should not have been made. It contravened every parliamentary precedent going back to Cromwell. They sat up and listened, didn't they? Only because they couldn't believe what they were hearing. Well, I couldn't believe what I read. I thought they received it rather well. It is known in the trade as a stunned silence. The only sound I could hear was the dull thud of chin sitting the carpet as honourable members were gobsmacked. But you agree something had to be said about this? Well, of course. And later on this afternoon, we would have rolled out the big guns, but you preempted all that by letting off your damp squibs. It was not a damp squib. The shadow minister would have had more than plenty to say about that. Well, I had plenty to say about that. He is an experienced politician. I am an experienced woman. Well, if you're going to drag irrelevances into it. <laughs> anyway, it's done now. I suppose all things considered, it wasn't a bad speech. Thank you, Norman. For a novice? <laughs> well, I'd better be getting on. Ah, oh, there oh, Mr. Lynch, you are, Mr. you? May I congratulate you? Absolutely superb. I was moved. Very good. We were all moved. Weren't we, Freddy? Well... Yes, Freddy was moved, too. <laughs> I'll be in the bar if anybody wants to, um... 
but I don't suppose they will. <laughs> yes, really very impressive, Jean. You tackle that woman issue square on. Really took the cow by the horns. Very good. Oh, thank you, Godfrey. You're so graphic. Oh, uh, if I... Oh, thank you. If you're agreeable, I'd like to put something by you in the catalogue. I thought we could start a feminist section, you know, for the little ladies. Move with the times. I'd pay you 50 quid a speech. Now, what do you think? Do you really want to know what I think, Godfrey? Oh, yes, I'd be most interested. Right. Well, that was an outstanding debut. Though it could be some time before you get asked to do an encore. What do you mean? You don't know about John McLennan. John McLennan? Mm, known in the house for some time as Silent John McLennan. What are you trying to tell me, Ken? Well, like you, he decided to forgo the petty rules and precedents. Oh, there's a precedent for ignoring the precedents. Oh, yes, people have been ignoring precedents here since precedents were invented. It's something of a tradition, really. <laughs> John McLennan. Ah, mm, yes. Well, instead of giving us the formula maiden speech, he gave us one hour, 55 minutes on the plight of the unemployed. It took the varnish off the woodwork. It was oratory as she spoke. And? Never uttered another word for two and a half years. But what stopped him from speaking? He just never got called. They sent him to Coventry? Yeah, and it wasn't even his constituency. <laughs> just for flouting the conventions, you mean there's a blacklist? Oh, no, nothing as unsubtle as that. Well, you might have warned me. Well, I didn't know you were going to go in there and give us the feminist version of I Had a Dream. <laughs> so, I won't get called again? Well, I wouldn't say that, but, um, if you've got any holidays booked, I would go on them. <laughs> two weeks, I mean, two weeks, and I haven't been called to say anything. Yes, I know, Jean, it's all you've talked about. Every working day, I've gone in there, waved my order paper about from dusk until dawn, and I'm not called to say anything. Yes, I know, it's terrible. But the thing is, if you were to listen to... I can't to get a word in, not edgeways, sideways or anyways. <laughs> Even in debates, where it's obvious that as a woman I have a contribution to make, everyone gets called but me. All those diehards from the shires who think a woman's something you clean a horse with. They get to stick their oars in, but I don't. It is just so frustrating. Yes. Preventing a politician from talking is like... Taking Eric Clapton's guitar away. <laughs> exactly. The spoken word is an integral part of your job. Your mouth is, well... Your major weapon. A tool of your trade. And if my constituents don't hear me speaking soon, they'll think I'm on the sky. Well, I'll write you a note. <laughs> it is no joke. Look, Jean, don't you think most MPs feel like this? There are 650 of you. You can't all have ten minutes each day to do your party piece. Anyway, they'll forgive you eventually. They forgave Napoleon eventually, but they buried him first. <laughs> so unfair! The cause of all this only got probation. I'm getting a harder sentence than he did. Yes, but well, that judge did take early retirement. Twenty years too late. <laughs> well, I just have to sit it out, I suppose. Just makes me so angry not being able to speak, that's all. Oh, sorry, Jeff. you're going to say something. Yes. Just doesn't seem topical anymore. <laughs> Sorry, Jean. Uh, um, Norman. No. What do you mean, no? You don't even know what I'm going to ask you. It's a favour, isn't it? Well, yes. No. <laughs> what happened to you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours? My back's not itchy. <laughs> Mine might be. Well, that's just too bad. See, it's the duty of the whip to maintain party discipline. In fact, you know where the word whip comes from? It's a Soho expression. Fox hunting term. The whipper in is the man who stops the dogs getting out of control. Oh, I see. So in your opinion, backbench MPs are a bunch of animals, are we? Yes. And if you think I'm going to reward little messes on the carpet, such as outrageous maiden speeches, with little words into little ears, just because someone hasn't been called to speak recently, well... Yes. No. <laughs> anyway, I hope you're settling in, Jean. Any problems? You know what to do? Yes, I ring the Samaritans. <laughs>
Hello, Jean. Not now, Godfrey. I'm working on a depression. <laughs> I thought I'd stop by and say those three little words that mean so much. I love you too, Godfrey. Now get lost. <laughs> now the other three little words, quid pro quo. And what do you want a quid for? Well, I tell you, if I had a quid for every quo I didn't have a quid for, I'd be a very rich man today. <laughs> you are a rich man today, Godfrey. I looked you up in the register. Oh, how kind of you to take an interest. Not at all. I assure you, I was entirely motivated by malice. Good. You're getting the feel of the place. Now, small birds tell me that you're not being called to speak, and maybe you'd like to know what's stopping you. Go on. Well, what about the pro quo? What about it? You'll give me a little speech from my catalogue, and I'll give you a little insight into the workings. Let's see if your quid's bankable first. Well, the remedy's very simple. Sit somewhere else. What difference is that going to make? Well, Jean, you know, politics is simply a matter of perspective. I mean, there are things that we on the government benches see that you probably are unaware of. Things that we Tories know that you socialists don't. Like what happened to the health service? <laughs> well, I can't talk about that, but if ever I should stumble across your defence policy, I'll certainly hand it into the police station. <laughs> I'll think about it. Jolly good. Shall we drink to the success of our little coalition? That's socialist tea, Godfrey. <laughs> oh, um, I got called to speak today, Harry. Well done, Mrs. Price. <laughs> that speech ready, Jean. Hope it chokes you. Thank you. <laughs> ah, Freddie. The vote catcher you wanted for the little ladies. Ah, you've got it. How simply splendid. Um, will you take a check? <sighs> <laughs> so what difference did sitting somewhere else make? It was Victor. I was right next to him. And? So, what about him? He's 22 stone. It was like sitting next to a brick wall. No one could see me. <laughs> oh, see, so it wasn't discrimination. No, it was invisibility. <laughs> What did you say? Well, the speaker called me on the equality debate, so I got up. And you should have heard them on the other side when I started to attack the government's record on opportunities for women. Well, you really won them over, I bet. They really sat up and listened, eh? They called me an ignorant bat. <laughs> Someone shouted, sit down, you silly cow. Another said, go home and put the tea on, do what you're good at. Oh, that's dreadful. It was great. It was great? I really felt as though I was participating in the serious side of politics at last. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.